Narvel Roth writes down in his journal his outlook on gardens, comparing them to his beliefs in life. He is a master gardener, a horticulturist overseeing Norma Haverhill's garden. The spring charity auction is near, and he wants to exceed last year's results, not just for the sake of charity, but for Norma herself. Norma asks to meet Narvel at her house, calling him Sweet Pea. Her cook, Ronnie, serves them drinks while they talk about ramping up the upcoming auction. Then Norma asks Narvel a favor regarding a relative. She says her grandniece, Maya, lost her mother and she wants to take her in before her life completely spirals out of control. She specifically notes she's a mixed blood, using those exact words. It's giving secret racist. She even quickly mentions that Maya's mother was into black men and doesn't quite understand why, but apparently she's not judging. Miss Sigourney Weaver literally gave birth to a mixed alien, so she's not one to talk. She wants Narvel to take Maya as an apprentice and give her lessons about horticulture. So he agrees to look after her and teach her everything she needs to know about gardening. Then they walk in the garden with Porch Dog, yes, that's its name. At night, Narvel dreams about his past. One day, Maya arrives at Gracewood and Narvel welcomes her. She used to visit the garden when she was young, but her memories about it were a blur. Narvel reveals Norma's plan for her, then gives her a tour of the estate. He introduces her to Isabel, Xavier, and Maggie, who are all working in Norma's garden. Narvel tells her there are eight different types of hoes, and baby, I can be all eight types of you want. Narvel tells Maya to get changed, and then their lessons in gardening begin right away. Maya pays attention to the lessons, and she's paid a minimum wage plus a service car to take her home. Narvel tells the students to inhale the dirt as if it were cocaine. Oh, he a dirty, dirty man. Narvel sees Maya working hard, and even Isabel thinks she's doing good, even though she's new. Narvel fills his journal every day with his thoughts about gardening, but every now and then, he's reminded of his past inked on his body, the swastika, white pride tat, and neo-Nazi symbols. Oh, let's return his ass to Walmart. After two weeks of working in the garden, Narvel and the others have a little celebration for Maya. Later that night, Narvel visits Norma at the Grand House. Norma asks about Maya for the first time since Maya's arrival. She admits she didn't do any research about the young woman, then adds that she also didn't do any research about Narvel when she first hired him. Norma is glad that Maya is smart enough and that she's doing well in her lessons. During dinner, Norma reveals that this year's auction might be her last due to some health issues, so she wants it to be successful and grand. Some parts of the property will be sold off, but the trust will ensure that the gardens will last. Norma says that Narvel will be paid yearly and have complete control of the gardens, and in time will pick a successor. Since she also inherited and maintained the garden for years, Norma would like it to remain within the family. She wants to know if Maya is up for the job, so Narvel tells her to meet her grandniece to get to know her better. After that, Norma asks Narvel to take her to bed. Before Narvel can even begin removing Norma's clothes, Norma tells him to get naked first. Oh, he into great grannies? He doesn't hesitate, and Norma sees once more the tattoos on his body. Narvel remembers the time he had to follow an order. A young man named Johnny had been talking to the feds, and Narvel had to get rid of him. Soon, Norma introduces herself to Maya, and she apologizes for not visiting her earlier. She's surprised that Maya has learned a lot in just a short period of time. Maya reveals that she remembers Norma, and that her mother used to talk about her when she was still alive. Maya's mother is named after Norma, but Norma said that her sister Betty didn't have her permission to do so. Maya gets pissed because her mother used to believe that Norma thought she was inadequate. Norma insists that Maya's mother couldn't take care of herself, even though everything was done to help her. Even though she thinks that Maya is impertinent, she prevents her from leaving Gracewood Gardens. The next day after their lesson, Narvel asks about Maya's lunch with Norma. Narvel knows that Norma walked out on Maya, so he advises Maya to be careful not to offend Norma. Maya appreciates the advice, and she kisses Narvel on the cheek. A few days after, Xavier tells Narvel that Maya got injured. Isabel knows that if they call 911, Maya will have to do a drug test. So Narvel decides that Maya will stay in the shed, Janine will fix her, and they will figure out what they will do with her. Narvel learns that a man named R.G. beat up Maya. He was the dealer of Maya's mom, and after she died, Maya started running errands for him. He didn't like Maya's attitude and the way she smelled after working at the garden, so he beat her up. Narvel thinks that it's best for Maya to stay the night in Gracewood, so he asks Norma's permission. However, Norma thinks that Maya should figure it out on her own. Norma signals to sleep with him tonight, but Mans makes an excuse. Despite not openly being given permission, Maya stays the night in what used to be Narvel's cabin. Narvel asks to meet the Fed agent assigned to him, Oscar Neruda, 
They reminisce about the time Narvel worked for a white supremacist and how he killed a black man in front of his wife and daughter. Afterwards, Narvel turned most of the white supremacists in and the feds had them killed. Afterwards, Narvel had to be part of the witness protection program. After 14 indictments and two years in court, resulting to breaking up his group, Narvel wonders if he's finally in the clear. Neruda explains that it will never happen because there will always be white supremacists trying to climb the ladder, wanting to kill Narvel. Narvel then asks for a favor regarding Maya's problem. He asks Neruda to send some law enforcement to talk to Robbie Gomez, the dealer who beat up Maya. He wants RG to be warned so he won't ever hurt Maya again. Neruda promises to help, but also adds that he'll be retiring soon and a new case agent will be assigned to Narvel. Afterwards, Narvel tells Maya that he took care of her problem, then says that Norma wants to invite her for lunch. Because Narvel always checks on Maya, he finds himself falling for her. He says, just like the seeds of hate, the seeds of love has started. One night when he delivers a dress Maya is going to wear for lunch, Maya decides to remove her covers to show some leg, Henny. They start to get too close and Maya starts lifting his shirt, but he pushes her away knowing he need to slice his skin off first. He walks past the grand house still fixing the wood that formed in his pants. Maya shows up at lunch wearing the yellow dress that Norma got her. Norma starts out by complimenting Maya looking great in the dress, then proceeds to talk about herself. Norma says she bets there's some juicy pics of Maya on the web. Maya and Narvel be looking at each other like they want to fuck and it doesn't go unnoticed. Then Norma snaps. She says Narvel's dick be talking too much. Norma finally reveals she saw Narvel walking out of Maya's cabin, still fixing his pants. Offended by how she's treated, Maya walks out of the room, leaving Narvel to deal with his boss. Assuming that the two have a sexual relationship, Norma accuses Narvel of being Humbert in the Lolita novel. Norma calls Maya a slut even though Norma been sleeping with an employee under her. Narvel defends himself, saying that he'll come back the next day to talk to Norma when she's finally calmed down. However, Norma already decides she'll kick out the two out of her property. Oh, this woman jealous AF. She want the white supremacists to herself. Narvel delivers the news to Maya but tells her she can stay with him because he's also fired from his job. So Maya packs her things and joins Narvel. Maya says she has to pick up some of her things from her ex-boyfriend's house. She doesn't want to take Narvel with her, so she asks him to wait in the car. Narvel starts to worry because Maya is taking too long to pack her things. Eventually, he gives up and drives to Robbie's house. Narvel gets out of the car and warns Robbie and his friend, Sissy, to leave Maya alone. Oh, hell nah. What does Maya see in this guy? RG be looking like a lanky-ass Skeletor. He says he won't hesitate to get back at them if they continue to bother Maya. However, Robbie and Sissy don't seem to believe Narvel and think that he's just a farmer. Very quickly, Narvel drives back in time to pick up Maya. He notices that something's changed and realizes that Maya got high before getting back. He tells her to throw whatever drugs she has on her, or he'll look for it himself. So Maya throws out the drugs she's hiding between her arms. He takes her to a motel and gets a bedroom with two beds. Maya's starting to have some withdrawal symptoms, and Narvel is helping her deal with it. He accompanies her to a support group so she can cope as she gets the drugs out of her system. He patiently supports her until she starts feeling better. With no job to keep him busy, Narvel remembers the time the feds told him he had to move to a new town far away from his daughter to start a new life. Narvel tried asking Neruda about his daughter, but the agent told him that he would only endanger the girl if he contacts her. When Maya asked about his personal life, Narvel lies and says he was once married and that the marriage ended when their only daughter died. Maya then reveals that her father's name was Malady and he died because of drugs. One night, Narvel gets too comfortable and takes off his shirt. The next day, he takes Maya out for another lesson on gardening. Maya reveals that she saw his tattoos the night before and she thinks he should have them removed. Narvel calmly says that he looked into it and decided not to remove the tattoos. He explains that he was raised to hate people different from him and that he thought Maya should know that he was once someone else. Maya is furious and doesn't even want to be touched by Narvel. He insists he's different now. He's just a gardener and Maya's friend. She's furious and walks out. He takes Maya back to the motel and gets two separate rooms. Then Narvel calls Neruda and asks to meet him tomorrow. One night, Maya knocks on Narvel's room she reveals that she wants to show herself to him, then proceeds to take off her clothes. Then she asks Narvel to do the same. He thinks twice, but eventually gets naked in front of Maya, showing his tattoos. There's tons of swastikas on his back. She says he will have them all removed. To show inferiority, he gets on his knees to serve her. Then he eventually plants his seed into her. During a late night drive, they see newly bloomed flowers at the side of the road, and they scream their heart out in celebration. 
The next day, Narvel is surprised that Naruta is replaced by a new agent earlier than expected. Stephen Collins wants to help Narvel with whatever concern he has, but Narvel insists that it's something the new agent can handle. While Narvel is talking to Stephen, RG and Sissy are already wreaking havoc in the Gracewood Gardens, cutting, stomping, and killing the plants and flowers in years of hard work. Later, Narvel receives a call about what happened to Gracewood, so he and Maya quickly come over to visit. What was once a very beautiful garden now turned to a huge pile of mess. Xavier explains that the police came over, but he couldn't tell them anything because he didn't really see what happened. Narvel checks on Norma and finds out that she's okay, but Porch Dog got kicked. All right, we about to raise hell. Norma shows her father's Luger that she had to keep her safe. Narvel takes the gun from her and then checks his cabin. He sees that RG and Sissy had spray-painted swastikas on his walls. Narvel takes a gun from beneath the floor, thinking about getting revenge. Maya insists on joining him, saying she knows where to find them. They drive that night to RG and Sissy's hideout where a party's happening. After successfully getting in, Narvel fires his gun to scare all the other people out, leaving only RG and Sissy. He hands the gun to Maya, saying she can choose what to do with the two since she wants them both dead. Maya points the gun at them, but she can't really pull the trigger and walks out the house. To teach the two a lesson, Narvel orders them to stretch out their legs before he breaks their kneecaps. And that's what y'all get for kicking that dog and being fugly racist. The next day, the other gardeners are starting to clean up the mess. Narvel hands back the Luger to Norma, then talks to her about the restoration of Gracewood. He says that next year's gala will be an achievement, so she shouldn't give up on the garden. Then he asks permission to live in the cabin with Maya as husband and wife. Norma is shocked and says it's obscene. She threatens to shoot Narvel, but he says there will be justice in it and he deserves it, so it's fine. However, the gun is not loaded and is not working, so Norma throws a fit before calling him Sweet Pea. Then Narvel walks out of the house and goes home to Maya. They dance on the porch, holding each other. For any black woman out there, would you still be with a man with tattoos like that, but shows through his actions that he's changed? In the case for Maya, she really was saved by Narvel. She would have continued her horrible life of drugs and with RG. I thought it was a decent movie that more need to see. What did you guys think?